protection. <laughs> Not only because I look great in the morning, but uh, for your protection, you can have a security game. And uh, yeah, excellent. So there'll be security cameras watching us. If you stay together, this is a sign for the security that uh, you're with me. <laughs> so we stay together as a group also behind me. about 10 meters above sea level. 10 yeah? meters? Because watch, look at this, it's a dike. Okay. Yeah, it's a double dike, actually. Yeah, we always have three systems of dikes. Um, and we don't close, as I said uh, before, with the animations, you know, the animator did a great job uh, there uh, in those animations that we saw, except he did not do his homework, which irritates me incredibly. <laughs> because he didn't do the correct order of the closing of the barriers, yeah? He just showed, he just thought whatever was pretty. But we don't close the Maslam barrier for a little bit of high water. We let houses flood. Because when, it's not nice for you, but you're the one who wanted a garden, right? Uh, it's not nice for you when the, when the, when the water is uh, to your hips uh, in your living room. Um, but it's more expensive, it's less expensive for us to leave the barrier open keep the shipping moving mm. and to come and say sorry about your carpet here you go here's some money <laughs> here you go, here you go. yeah take care of new wallpaper new television yeah this is less expensive than to close the port of Rotterdam yeah so when do we close it why did we build it this is what also this is one of the reasons uh, it took a long time uh, to say okay what is the point at which we close what what measure of water and we have said that for um, the Maslan barrier, there is such a height of water. It's almost always more expensive to close the port, but there is a height of water where we're talking about, we're not talking about material damage anymore. We say this is a height of water, certainly there will be fatalities. Yeah, people will die. And for that, we close the Maslan barrier. And for nothing less. Yeah, not for furniture. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's horrible when your house floods. It is really horrible, believe me. I've helped a lot of people <laughs> when their houses is flood, and it's it's horrible. But, <laughs> it, you know, it's not deadly. So, um, when do we say that this height is? We say when the sea reaches three meters above the sea. So, where we are standing, the sea will be exactly here before the Maslan barrier will close. And she won't do it for this. She won't do it for two, three centimeters less. And who is she? The one and only queen. <laughs> Here. You. No. <laughs> you. No. This is something the engineers also thought about. Okay. You can look at, you look at cost. You look at its structural integrity. You look at environments. You look at its economics. But what do you also have to look at? Human nature. And what, when the engineers look at human nature, did they see? They see a barrier, building a barrier that has such an enormous economic impact on the entire country. Yeah, opening or closing this barrier, yeah, has consequences for all of the Netherlands. Yeah, all the way deep into the east, so where they also have the shipping companies and the, yeah, all of these are river boats, all of these. Are worldwide. We negotiate with all the shipping companies in the entire world for months before we get a date 
all the worldwide shipping. That's what happens when you close the, you close the new waterway. So they said this consequence of this decision is so tremendous, it must be made by a rational entity, which means not a human being. <laughs> I mean, we like to think of ourselves as rational, huh? We like to say, oh no, I had very good reason, and I looked at the material, and uh, I made a decision based on the facts. Not true. <laughs> it's just simply not true. We know that most people make their decision based on an instinct, on emotion. Yeah? All of the engineers who work here, they live in Westland. Westland is... <laughs> Five, five and a half meters below sea level. Yeah? If such a man has new carpet in his living room, his children are at school, haven't learned to swim yet. <laughs> yeah? And he sees that sea coming. It's 430, 470, 480, yeah? He's gonna start to get scared. And everything he's learned and all of his education is what is gonna be the consequence. He's gonna see this. That you see all the companies that he knows and the farmers and everything, watching them get wiped out one by one. What is he gonna think if he has a decision? I just walk his Um, Did you lock the, the gate? I did lock the gate. So what happened if the sea high tide comes? Run, swim. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you, you're a little bit early. Uh, we expect uh, on Thursday or Friday. Uh, yeah, we're going to have high water. But not high enough. We, we don't need high enough. Uh, um, because there's... Uh, here you see... They're on, on this side of the water as well. They go oh, under the side, up with the door draft, all this area is everywhere. And all the way out to the North Sea. When I saw them, I thought, that was the stupidest docking station for I've ever seen in my life. You dock your boat, and then what? You can't go anywhere. <laughs> You're just still in the middle of the water. Well, I found out they're not. <laughs> they are Bulls. Her name is Bulls? O S. 
Yeah? She's the boss. Um, <laughs> that's not what she's called. It's, it's because for Dutch short, uh, the sluit is ondersteuning system. Decision making and support system. She is. These are her sensors. They're not all the way deep and deep and only deep into the country. They go all the way out the North Sea, all the way up the coast, all the way through to northern Scotland and the coast of Norway. She has them everywhere, thousands of them. Feel it. She's sensing the water height, the speed of the water flowing, the wind speed. Based on all of this, she makes a prediction every 10 minutes. Every 10 minutes, she makes a prediction 24 hours ahead of time what will happen. Every 10 minutes, 24 hours a day, she's telling us, actually, for 15 years, except for this one time in November 2007, she, all she has been telling us every 10 minutes is, we are safe for the next 24 hours. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so while all other barriers may close, Bos has complete control over this one and the heart of barrier in the saddle. And the heart of barrier, she closes for different reasons. And you saw it was much further inland. Yeah? You see that this one's quite close to sea. See where the land points end? That's the North Sea. Yeah? And the heart of barrier is up to the So yeah, nobody lives on this island. Um, it's all for heavy industry. <coughs> and so, but we close that barrier, she closes that barrier for different reasons also. Yeah, she gets uh, different signals uh, for different reasons. Also, a water management system for the drinking water. The city of Rotterdam. Yeah, so if she wants to refresh the drinking water in Rotterdam, she close the heart of barrier, just moving a river. By that way, moving a river and then getting more fresh water into uh, the drinking water system for, for, for filtration purposes. But she makes these decisions. And let's look at how it works. Now let's look at the thing itself. Of course, I said it in the film. This is about from the shoulder to the wall, about 300 meters. Yeah, a little bit okay. less. So this thing up on the shoulder. Yeah, it would be as tall as the Eiffel Tower. Mm. Is it, big? it looks smaller because so it's so big. So when you're close to it, it looks smaller. It's like mountains. The biggest yeah. You know how mountains are so big that you go, oh, I'll just walk up to the top of that mountain. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and if you walk for 50 kilometers, <laughs> you're not even close to the mountain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. Because they're so big, your mind makes them smaller. So it can, the, the mass on Barry is like that too. It's so massive. But one door weighs 15,000 tons of steel. 15,000 tons uh, metric. That yeah, order. that's 15 million kilos of steel. Uh, One door. Before filling with the water? Or hmm? is, uh, before no, filling empty. 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 This is, this is nine centimeters thick steel. Yeah? Wow. This is, um, yeah. <laughs> It's nine that centimeters, and everybody, I always see people going tick tick, yeah. and I'm like, you're not going to hear anything, it's nine centimeters thick, you know, but it's still irresistible, it's just, oh, oh. I break your hand, you're still not going to hear anything. <laughs> um, that is the biggest bearing in the world. Toy. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a joint, like your shoulder joint. No. Yeah, it's a big steel ball, huh. yeah, so that it can move up and down, and it can do this, yeah, because... The, the wall itself is actually a ship. It's oh. it's a, a super tanker. Yeah, if you want to move 15,000 tons of steel, then you know it's better to sail it <laughs> than to put it on wheels or something, especially all over the water. So uh, the door, door wall, however you want to call it, is two, 210 meters long, 22 meters high, and it's built like a super tanker. It's all hollow compartments. Yeah. So it's floating. Yeah. And. Um, the, this red machine here, this is called the locomobile, and this works like an upside down train. The train is powerful. It's own mass over the rails, 
the locomobile uses the power of its engine to push the rail underneath itself. The rails are part of the top of the door. So the locomobile engines turn and it simply pushes the boat out. Now, when they're in closed position like this, you, uh, you've closed the new waterway, <laughs> closed down the Dutch economy, yeah? But uh, you haven't stopped a drop of water, of course, because ships don't stop water, right? <laughs> they float on water. <laughs> so it's time to sink the ship. And how do you sink a ship? Put a hole in it. Put a hole in it, yeah. So there's all little valves. Maybe see them from here. See these little squares on the side? Yeah, they open up. And the doors and the trusses fill with water. It's going on. And it's sink all the way to the bottom. Uh, I'm going to make my security very nervous getting outside of the chain. Hang on. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> Oh, guy a little bit more uh, so yeah, than the other guy. Do you have uh, many like uh, siren in for uh, people? Oh, sirens? Uh, no, actually, you can uh, from very many places. You can tell. Yeah. Um, yeah. What 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 will happen? And as someone asked me before when we were just at, we were just outside. There was a small group. He said, "How long does it take the entire procedure to close?" Mm -hmm. And um, I answered, "We could we we could close in 40 minutes." Yeah? But then we will destroy our economy. <laughs> we'll bankrupt the country. Uh, because we can move out in 20. Yeah? And you can sink in 20. If you open the valves full, it'll fill up. Each door takes about uh, 440 million liters of water. Mm -hmm. X the trusses. I'm not sure exactly how much goes in the trusses, but, uh, um, but just the door. And you can then sink in 20 also. But then you would have a uh, rubber boot in the mud. Yeah? In? Easy. But out? What happens? Yeah, suction. Here too, because we have all this fine uh, dirt moving down the river. It's building up here on the bottom. If this 15,000 tons with all that water sinks into that mud, you're never going to get it open again. Yeah? So, yeah, destroy the port for it. Yeah. At least if we want. <laughs> um, so, and then Hamburg will really take over. <laughs> and the Belgians, uh, Antwerp. Uh, so we sink very slowly. Boss sinks very slowly. She does it all. Huh? Um, she makes the decision and uh, she has her boss and best. It is actually the executive process. And she, 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 she shifts into executive process and then. Uh, and she does all of the all of the work, all of the closing. It can be done manually. You can uh, not like inside with a big button, uh, but uh, <laughs> also again taking care of people. We don't let any engineer be alone with walls. We always have to at least do with three, because again, human nature. You know, yeah. people can get a little bit strange. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we know this, right? So we also, no one is allowed to be alone with her. Um, uh, we protect her and that's why we think, okay, if you at least have three, then uh, if somebody gets a crazy idea, the other yeah. two will stop him. <laughs> um, when she says 24 hours ahead of time that uh, uh, she's gonna close, she sends immediately, she, the engineers, they have to come, yeah? Uh, here you can see the bunker on the south side, yeah, this, and we have one here on the north side, yeah. This is Big Wolf, this is the big sister, if something happens to her, we have her twin sister on the south side, backup system, two brains, yeah, and third backup, 15 engineers on the north side, 15 engineers on the south side, four backup brain systems, operating systems. When she says 24 hours ahead of time, I'm going to close in 24 hours. The water will be so high that I have to close. She'll inform immediately the Port Authority. Yeah, now they have some time to take care of these boats. And uh, she calls the engineers to come to work. They all must live close. So they all live here in Westland, as I said, all living very deep. And they must come 24 hours ahead of time. 
Because you saw this road you drove on the bus? Yeah. yeah. yeah? Watch this road when you go back. Watch all the roads you're driving on. You see this road? It's outside of the dikes. When that sea comes and rises, there is no road. <laughs> yeah? That road is not very high. It's about like 10 centimeters, 20 centimeters above sea level. <laughs> so when, yeah, when the water starts to come up, this is why boss told us maybe Thursday and Friday, certainly. Yeah, we're close because probably there'll be no road. <laughs> maybe if I drive here to work, oh, no road. Okay, go home. <laughs> Well, our road's gone. <laughs> the sea ate the road. <laughs> um, so they have to come 24 hours ahead of time, and they do nothing. She does all the work, I said. 15 persons, we have beds, showers, uh, video games. Why? Because they're 15 persons, they can stay one month doing nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Only if they're backing up. Um, and that we'll have to, you'll have to have Boss 1, Boss North, and Boss South fail for them to back up. Then they can take over, but then you need physically, again, express on purpose from the engineers. Yeah, they made it so that you need physically, manually, 10 human beings to manually close. Yeah, this button has to be pushed at the same time. This button, yeah, so that nobody, yeah, some boys having a party, having a few drinks. And, you know, we really funny. <laughs> yeah? What does this button do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or no, just think, you know, if it would be fun. You know? <laughs> hey, let's close the muscle there. <laughs> and like I said, we don't close her for, uh, uh, I mean, the boss will not close. She does not make, she's not going to compromise. Say, oh, well, it looks a little bit high. Oh, you know, she won't, she, she'll say, this is my, my measuring. Every 10 minutes, she'll keep on measuring. She'll, uh, she'll keep on measuring. She'll say, uh, am I correct? Is my prediction correct? Is my prediction correct? Now let's assume that her prediction was correct. Every 10 minutes she'll keep on doing this until 10 hours before closing. 10 hours before closing, she'll say, she'll say, um, yes, final decision. And then she'll last, the last uh, uh, note to uh, the Port Authority. This means they have four more hours. Only four hours. Because six hours before closing, like I told you, we only close this to protect the lives of a million and a half persons, yeah? We say if something happens, then, the, then people can die. So what happens if a ship doesn't hear the call from Port Authority? Or what happens if some crazy captain thinks, uh, yeah, he knows better, you know? Skatino, you know this Concordia guy, yeah? Yeah, Skatino. And he uh, thinks, oh no, I have a, I have a date, so I'm going to go into port anyway. He said, no, you can't come, yeah? <laughs> and he sees too late then uh, the barrier and he crashes into the barrier what do you have you have a sunken ship and a damaged barrier yeah. with a life of more than a million people hanging in the balance so what is much more economical what's the better decision hmm? sinking that's right sink the boat before it touches the barrier <laughs> that's right that's absolutely correct that's what you that's the best decision Huh? It's a lot less cleaning up. Well, we used to, I used to imagine it was torpedoes, but it's not true. It was never, never, never torpedoes. I did not say that. I did not say torpedoes. So you thought so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because you can imagine it. I'm yeah. just standing there with the torpedoes. Um, no, no, no. We used to do uh, like a big can opener. So we put steel cables on the riverside and on the seaside. And if a boat comes, you just oh. cut it right open. Yeah, it's a, like I said, it's a lot less clean up. <laughs> At least your, de your barrier is okay. <laughs> um, but because uh, laws have changed, European law now uh, says that you are not allowed to sink a ship on purpose. Yeah. This is the important word. Yeah. yeah. On purpose. <laughs> yeah. <Oops. laughs> because of environmental concerns. Because you never know what kind of, you know, yeah, yeah crap can be on the ship and uh, you could poison the water and. Uh, uh, so now we ran a flood. Six hours before closing, uh, Port Authority sets up uh, tugboats. You know, they're small, but very, very powerful. Two, for the guys with a really strong stomach, <laughs> they don't forget it's an incredible storm. Huh? <laughs> two on the, on, the, on the seaside and two on the riverside. And 
time any boat gets anywhere near the Maslam barrier with a tube, they ram the side of the boat to try to get to undeep water. If the ship then sinks, it wasn't on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> By nature. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we just tried to get it, you know, up yeah, onto yeah. the land. Yeah. We're just trying to, yeah, it's not our boat, we're just trying to move it a little bit. Now we're trying to bring it down. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's the procedure. So we'll go back in and get lunch and I'll, and I'll answer some more of your questions. by one by ship. Yeah, the longest we could bring was 60 meters long. Because otherwise it couldn't go through the bend in the river. <laughs> couldn't make the turns. And uh, we welded it together here. They bring a piece, bring another piece, bring another piece, bring another piece. And what were the two rules of the Port Authority? No height limit on the Port of Rosadam and no interference with the shipping. All of a sudden Port Authority calls. Very angry. Very, very angry. What in the hell are you doing? The ships are blind. What happened? Nobody put 30,000 tons of steel in one place before. Oh. It absorbs all of the radar. Oh. <laughs> it's a black hole. Oh. This whole area is a black hole. It's so big, it's yeah. stealth. It's invisible. <laughs> <laughs> Secret of the Muslim barrier. Now engineers worldwide found out. Oh, oh! If you put that much steel in one place, it's just absolutely invisible. Jadi kebanyakan akan lumpuh besi. sending out constantly the signal to the ships. Here's the Muslim barrier. Here's the Muslim barrier. Because if you look on the radar of the ship, all you see is one big black hole. Once they sail in here, they're blind. 